everyone, I like taking things apart, and since you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you do too, or at the very least you like watching other people take things apart. Anyway, like I did last year for my Model S, let's find out what's really under the hood of a dual-motor Tesla Model 3, and while I'm at it, I'll do a step-by-step -step on how to remove all of the frunk trim pieces. So let's get started. Pulling the Model 3's frunk apart is surprisingly simple and only requires two tools, your hands and a 10mm socket and socket wrench. The first step is to expose all the 10mm bolts that need to be removed. There's one under each of these two cargo hooks. There are two underneath the frunk floor carpet. And, and don't worry, the, the sticky stuff is stuck to the carpet with Velcro, so it comes right up with the carpet. There are two 10 millimeter bolts under the hood latch cover right here, which I'll deal with in just a moment. And there's one right around here underneath this access panel. The access panel is straightforward to remove as it's just held in with plastic pins. So you can just pull up on it like this and it begins to come out. There we go. You can see the uh, pins that hold it in right there. The last two bolts are under the hood latch cover here, which you can remove by grabbing the bottom edge and pulling up. It's held in by clips in the top that are facing straight down, and then there are tabs here that go down into the plastic. So do not pull outward or you will break these tabs or possibly damage the clips at the top. So you want to grab it and pull straight up, just like that, and it comes loose. You'll note that there is a release button here. It does have a wire attached to it right here. There's a little pin on the wire that holds it in place. That pin doesn't really do anything if you press on it. So you have to grab the base of the connector and then just pull the wire out like that. With those pieces removed, you can see the location of the seven 10 millimeter bolts that we'll have to extract. But first, we'll need to remove this air inlet duct, uh, which feeds the cabin HVAC system as it's attached to both this plastic piece here and the frunk trim that we're gonna have to lift out. This duct is held in place with four of the same sort of plastic pins that attach the access panel. However, the, uh, the arms that the pins attach to are fairly flimsy. So you're gonna wanna be really careful pulling these out. So brace the plastic as you pull up. They pop out just like that. And the piece is removed. And now it's time to remove all seven of the 10 millimeter bolts in no particular order. With the bolts removed, the only thing holding in the frunk liner is a series of clips that run along the edge. There's one here, here, approximately here, and here. And you remove them by just pulling up like that. It'll start to free the clips, and you just work your way down. Once you've broken all of the clips free, the whole frunk liner assembly, you wanna get that wire caught right there, lifts right out like that. Ta-da! And here we have what's really under the frunk of a Tesla Model 3. Let me switch to the GoPro and I'll give you a little tour. Starting from the front, you've got the hood latch assembly right here. And it actually has two separate actuators, one on either side. This right here is the wire that goes to the emergency release button. And we've got the shroud for the uh, glycol loop radiator and the HVAC systems condenser, which is also under there somewhere. Horns are located there and there, just above the shroud. If you look over to this side, you'll see a whole bunch of grounds for the electrical system. And same deal on the other side. Uh, this right here is one of the headlamp housings. And if we come down here like this, you can just make out the heat sinks there uh, for the LED headlights. Moving right along, you've got the power steering rack down there. And there's the power assist electric motor. Interesting thing about this steering rack, unlike my old Hardware One Model S, um, is it actually has two what look like two separate uh, DC inputs here and here uh, to drive the power assist motor instead of just one. Looking a little bit over, you can see this right here is the input for the, uh, the power steering rack. This goes up to the steering wheel. Coming back up a bit, uh, this right here is the coolant tank for the glycol cooling loop that runs through, well, pretty much everything in the car. Um, off to the side here, this is the plate type or a stack plate heat exchanger that connects the glycol loop to the refrigeration loop. So this is this right here is what allows the car to use its AC compressor to cool the liquid that's running through the battery and the power electronics and, and all that sort of stuff. It's called a plate type or a stack plate heat exchanger because, well, if you look at it here, you can see it's made of a whole bunch of plates that are stacked on top of each other. Those plates being stacked 
create chambers. And so you run your glycol fluid through half of the chambers, usually, and your refrigerant through the other half, and they exchange heat through the wall of the chamber. Following those refrigerant lines this away, you can see this big black thing on these uh, hanging rubber mounts here. This is your AC compressor. It's actually nicely isolated here. You've got a rubber mount here and here, and the same thing on this side. You can see it, it moves fairly freely, um, but the movement is damped by the rubber bushings that are in there. That should help significantly reduce vibration transmitted to the rest of the car. This tee-off here runs underneath there, comes back up this way, and then runs into the evaporator in the cabin to cool the cabin air. Directly below, here's the fill cap for the glycol system. Your 12-volt battery here. Looks like Tesla chose to go with a wet cell lead acid, or at least that's my guess, uh, given that there's this drain line, uh, or vent line rather, on the side that runs down and out. If I remember correctly, the Model S, or at least my older Model S, is using uh, an AGM uh, lead-acid battery, an absorbed glass matte battery, uh, and those don't typically have vents like this. Next to the 12-volt battery, you've got your uh, brake fluid reservoir right here, and then your washer fluid fill. The brake fluid reservoir is attached to the brake master cylinder right there, which has some braided lines coming out of it that run down to... It looks like the ABS controller, that thing right there with all those lines coming out of it. Coming back up, uh, got the emergency responder cut loop right there, which disables the car and safes the high voltage system. Going back to the coolant reservoir for a moment, you can see that they've really designed this to be a highly integrated assembly. I mean, you've got the plate type heat exchanger on the side. You've got one coolant pump right here integrated into the size of the housing. You've got a second coolant pump right here integrated into the opposite side of the housing. Down here, you've got um, some kind of valve controller. Looks like it'll probably change where things flow. Um, you'd get a better idea of how that works if I could look at it from underneath. And then you've got, let's see, this line here goes to one side of the radiator. This line here uh, looks like, if I can follow that around, yeah, that looks like it's a return, so that's connected to the other side of the radiator. And then, let's see what else we've got going on here. Of course, the front drive unit. Um, you can't really see a lot of it. Right there is part of the differential case. You should see the half shaft coming out on that side. And there's another one over here. And then right here you've got uh, another significantly larger plate type heat exchanger. This one is an oil to water heat exchanger. So um, there's an oil pump on the front drive unit that circulates oil through the drive unit. That oil is going to heat up. It runs it through this heat exchanger, which also has glycol lines connected to it here and here. Uh, and that is how heat from the motors can get dumped into the liquid cooling system. Let me see if I can get you in here a little bit further for a better look at the drive unit. Is that, that too dark? So I think um, that can right there, I think, is the actual motor side of the front drive unit. That, that can piece right there. And if we come around to the other side, I think that because over here... You can see that orange connector right there. I think that's high voltage going into the inverter side of the front drive unit, which is that right back there. It should be where the inverter is. Coming up and out of there. Uh, what else we got going on here? There are two lines right back here. Uh, those are, those look to be glycol lines, and those run out and down that way, and then back around to uh, one of the lines coming out of the reservoir, kind of back that way. Um, those lines are feeding coolant to the computer uh, inside the car. So the autopilot computer and the computer that controls the center screen, uh, those are actually liquid cooled. And so those are the lines right there that cool the computers that are inside the dash. One neat thing to see is that Tesla is clearly learning from the Model S. The front trim pieces are held on on the edge with these clips right here. And what's neat about them is that they actually pop into holes in the sheet metal rather than being stuck on with double-sided tape like the ones in the Model S are. The trouble with the ones in the Model S being stuck on with double-sided tape instead of you know, being clipped in through the sheet metal like that is that they fall off. In fact, I made a whole video about replacing the double-sided tape on those. Link in the description. So yeah, it's really great that Tesla has improved that. I don't have to worry about those falling off in the heat like I do uh, the Eclipse on my Model S, so that's awesome. Another neat thing that I found while poking around under here was this quality control sticker right here, dated 8-28-18. I think I may have just found this car's birthday. 
um, because Tesla originally was trying to get us to take delivery of it on 9-1-2018. Um, though we ended up taking delivery on the 6th just because we weren't available. So we got this car pretty much right after they finished it, which is pretty cool. And that is what's under the frunk of a dual-motor Tesla Model 3. Remember, installation is the reverse of removal. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comments section down below. As usual, don't forget to rate and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.